Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And today I'm going to be talking about why I have been enjoying the game World of Tanks less over the years, or at least one of the specific reasons. Now, of course, after you've done something for 12 years, you're going to feel very different about it. So I've tried to dig a little bit deeper to target one of the specific things that I think has massively degraded in World of Tanks over its development. And that reason is same tier matchmaking. Now, over the last few months, I've been playing a lot more at a, a few of the different tiers to try and spark my joy or interest in the game again, to try and get that feel that, you know, you once had. And one thing that I've always felt but never been able to statistically prove is that tier 8 and tier 10 feel like an absolute horror show, whereas tier 7 and tier 9 are probably one of the most comfortable tiers to play. And maybe not comfort is the the nice, the, the correct word to use. I should probably say comforting or probably just enjoyable. Now recently the awesome Tomato GG website that I thoroughly recommend that you check out put out some really cool server-wide statistics that actually show what the matchmaking is like at all of the different tiers in the game and how often your bottom tier, how often it's all of the same tier and how often you're having to play against high tier tanks. So we can see, for example, tier one tanks are bottom tier having to play against tier two tanks 69% of the time, whereas 30% of the time they are going to be playing against only tier one vehicles. Whereas if we look at tier five, Tier 5, 22% of the time are going to be playing against Tier 7. 35% of the time they're going to be playing against Tier 6. 7% of the time they're going to be middle in a three-tier spread, aka there's going to be Tier 6s, 5s, and 4s. Nearly 16% of the time they're going to be playing only against Tier 5 tanks. And 19% of the time they're going to be playing against Tier 4s. Now, a lot of you might be thinking, oh, well, where's those results against Tier 3? Well, that's because Tier 5 tanks can't meet Tier 3. Effectively, Tier 3 gets special matchmaking within that regard, which is why it is the SEAL Clubber's choice to play at Tier 3 in overpowered tanks. And that also explains why Tier 1 tanks can't meet Tier 3, and so on and so forth. But once you reach Tier 6 in World of Tanks, it's now a possibility to meet Tier 4 vehicles or to meet Tier 8 vehicles. So there are six different outcomes. You've got plus two, you've got plus one, you've got a middle spread where you're against one tier higher and one tier lower, you've got same tier, then you've got minus one matchmaking where it's all tier sixes and there are tier fives, and you've got minus two matchmaking where it's sixes, fives, and fours. So now that I've explained the different options, the eagle-eyed of you might notice that tier seven and tier nine, the two tiers that I talked about feeling are the most enjoyable for me, have practically no same tier matchmaking. And in fact, for tier seven, I don't think there was a single game on the European server, at least that's showing here, where all tier seven tanks were played. And for tier nine vehicles, it was only 1% of the games where it was all tier nine tanks. Whereas if we look at tier 10, 68% of the games that you play, you will be playing only against tier 10 vehicles. And at tier eight, 45% of the games that you play are only against tier 8 tanks. Now that will be down to, of course, how popular the battle distribution is. And we can see that there's a huge amount of tier 8 tanks in the matchmaker. There's not so many tier 10s. I genuinely thought there were a lot more tier 10s than that. With a big dip down at tier 7 and a significant plateau down at tier 9 compared to either side of their tier base. And that is why tier 9 and tier 7 are not getting same tier matchmaking, because they are sought after tiers inside the matchmaker to try and fill the preferred template, which will be the three tier spread. Now, interesting, because of this, tier 7 actually end up bottom in a plus two matchup against tier 9 tanks in one fifth of their games, whereas they're only ending up uh, playing against tier 5 tanks in less than 8% of their games. So it's nearly three times more likely that you're going to be playing against a tier 9 than you're going to be playing against a tier 5 in that regard. So recently, I went and played a lot of games in a lot of different tanks at tier 7, and I can tell you it was possibly some of the most enjoyable gameplay that I've had in a long time. I three marked the Panther M10, the E25, the T20. And while the results are really beside the point here, but I felt that I was more in it, at least mentally, and enjoying myself far more at tier seven than I than I have been in a lot of other 
tiers in World of Tanks. And while I had the feeling that it was down to the matchmaker and the huge amount of variety that you managed to get there, I never had statistics to reinforce this emotional and this subjective feeling. And so today I'm going to talk all about the benefits and the negatives of same tier matchmaking. And if any of these points resonate with you, then you can choose the kind of tier that you probably want to play in World of Tanks to get more of the kind of matchmaking that you want. So firstly, there are never any bigger tanks that you will have to deal with. The fact that there are less bigger tanks that you'll have to engage, meaning there are less of those rounds of a feeling of futility. Nobody wants to really play a tier six tank against a tier eight tank all of the time. However, considering Wargaming's template matchmaker, at least compared to what it used to be back in the day, there can only be, I think, five tanks that are two tiers higher than you. Now, that's 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 still a big deal. When a third of the enemy team are two tiers higher, those are vehicles that you might struggle to deal with, especially in your stock tanks. And what is what else is one of the benefits of not having to deal with any bigger tanks? Well, of course, there is the less need for gold rounds to penetrate armor that your vehicles aren't meant to have to deal with. However, I would argue that if you know all of the different vehicles, and while it is a, a huge task, learn about all of their different weak points, you can make up for having to just fire gold rounds. However, there are quite a few scenarios where not only do you have to know the weak points, you have to fire gold rounds at them when you're in plus two matchmaking. One of the benefits of same tier matchmaking is there are less different tanks. This means there are less vehicles that you have to learn. And importantly, because there are less tanks, the amount of different capabilities there could be on the vehicles inside the matchmaker are also less which definitely means that the game is simpler to try and figure out what is going to happen inside the battle. Also, when the matchmaker has to put less different tanks on different teams, then there are less focus on individual vehicles inside the matchmaker, i.e., you know, when the, the, what the matchmaker puts one BZ-176 as a top tier on one team and then puts it against a stock Tiger II. In those kind of scenarios, yeah, the matchmaker is definitely against you. However, I would argue that this is Wargaming's problem at not being able to balance their game and not really a matchmaker problem. And while it is a tall ask for a company to be able to balance hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different tanks that could possibly go into each one of the matchups at each tier. There is still no excuse for their impotence at not being able to nerf some of the overpowered premiums that are just destroying all of the different tiers inside the game. So now that I've talked about all of the benefits of same tier matchmaking, now I want to talk about some of the negatives. And let me clarify, this is entirely a subjective opinion. And some of the things that I talk about that I don't like about same tier matchmaking might not bother you in the slightest, or you might actually think are quite a, an enjoyable aspect that you don't have to deal with it. So firstly, when players have the same capabilities there are more playmakers inside the game. Now, let me clarify what that means. When, for example, you're in a three tier spread game, there are some tier eights and there are a lot, there are a good amount of tier fives and there are usually a lot of tier sixes. And usually the tanks that can make the plays are more of the, the top tier tanks inside the matchup. So, you know, that Tiger II has to be the one that makes the play and not the M6 rushing forwards to be able to get into position. What I feel this means is that in same tier matchmaking, it leads to stacked flanks and it's usually more about what numbers you have on a flank than actually predicting which vehicle, there are less of them that can make the play, is going to make it. This leads to uh, definitely a subjective opinion that in a lot of the same tier matchmaking games that I play, that once the flanks are stacked, it ends up feeling like it's either an incredibly static battle where no progress is made because all of the different vehicles have same capabilities, or that one team simply has more numbers than the enemy, and it feels like it's more of a, a formality than the different types of tanks and their capabilities are on a flank. My next point is that when you're a low tier vehicle, there are no large tanks to support. Now, maybe it's a crutch for me that I've relied on when I've been playing my stock tanks or when I've been a baby tank inside a big game, but I've always tried to look at the higher tier vehicles and think about how I can support them and how I can extend their hit points. And one of the reasons why I've always liked tanks with high damage per minute, for example, but low durability, is that if I can, for example, 
put my Cromwell Berlin in a position when my IS-3 is fighting against the enemy's defender, it doesn't matter how low my durability is if they're not going to shoot me and I can play that supporting role. And if I can make sure that I change those crunch engagements into my team's favor, I feel like I can still be very influential in the matchmaker. And because I think that I can play better in bad matchmaking than some of the tier sixes on the enemy team, that is how I feel I can get like a hyper carry going. And also on my free to play account, which I've played about 10, 15,000 games on, when I've been playing stock tanks and not with access to premium consumables or firing copious amounts of gold ammunition, I found myself definitely gravitating towards helping those vehicles inside those stock tanks to be more influential in the matchmaker. Maybe this sounds counterintuitive, but I'd rather be playing a stock Tiger II sometimes against tier 10 tanks if there's only about three tier 10 tanks on the enemy team, if I can try and position myself to make my tier 10 tanks do better. Now, not everyone will feel like that. A lot of people will feel like it's an individual game, it's not team-based, and they want to have their own capabilities to be able to engage whatever vehicle they want on the enemy team. And that's absolutely fine. But I very strongly feel that one of the best things about World of Tanks is actually the team-based combat. And if this game was more like a battle royale, like Steel Hunter, I don't think it would still be around uh, 12 years later. Next, I want to highlight how I feel, again, I'm going to use the word subjectively, that there's less reward for map awareness because all of the different pieces that are moving around the map more or less have the same capabilities. And it's just about seeing how many different numbers of vehicles there are rather than knowing those tanks' strengths and weaknesses and focusing on, should we say, the more important pieces, the bigger pieces, and where they are on the map and how it's likely to flow. And now, while I know, that, for example, when there's a Super Conqueror or a Chieftain on the enemy team and it's in a hold down position, it doesn't really matter if it's all tier 10 or if it's tier 10, some tier 9s and tier 8s. But for, for, for me, I vastly prefer looking at the minimap and focusing my playmaking around the big pieces that are in the different positions, rather than thinking that I'm just another wheel and I'm another cog in the wheel of the matchup. And this goes to one of my biggest points, that there is just no variety. You're doing the same thing again and again and again. This is one of my biggest points. I find this same tier matchmaking just so boring. I strongly feel that one of the best things about World of Tanks is that you can go into it, play it for like five, six hours, and you don't feel like you've had to do the same thing twice. All the way through the evening, it's different maps, it's different tanks that you can play. There's like, what, 600, 700 different tanks inside the game with at least about 300 or 400 different play styles. You've got like 40 different maps that you could manage to get on. You've got attack, defense, encounter, regular mode. And the final layer, and one of, at least in my opinion, the most important things in World of Tanks is that you've got the different matchups that you could play. Your Tiger II is going to feel completely different playing against tier six tanks as it will do against tier 10 tanks. And so in an ideal world for me, you're top tier some of the time, mid tier the majority of the time and bottom tier some of the time as well. Now, unfortunately, because of Wargaming definitely incentivizing players to play tier eight, because that's the tier that you manage to make all of the credits at, they have created a glut of tanks that will be able to cause problems, especially in their template-based matchmaker. Ideally in World of Tanks, the curve would actually go the other way, where there's more people playing tier one, two, three, four, five, and there's a small proportion of people playing tier 10. And that would mean that everyone was always getting plus two matchmaking in that regard, at least uh, apart from the people playing at, at one, two, and three. And so I'm really happy that recently Wargaming have dropped the battle pass requirements at tier four and tier five to encourage these numbers to increase. As while Wargaming quite often seem as if they're on a huge rush to try and get you up 
the tears as quickly as possible so you have to experience the poor economy and become a paying customer faster, I definitely don't think that that's a, a sustainable course of action and it's going to result in more of the issues that I'm, at least for me, and a player of the game and affect my enjoyment of it. The next thing that I want to talk about is that I feel that casual players have less hero moments. As somebody who's watched a lot of replays, a lot of amazing epic replays over the years, they haven't just been from the, the sweaty nerds like myself. Sure, the sweaty nerds are going to have more epic games more often, but the idea of what is an epic game is relative to the player. The happy little strawberry out there might feel that I got a couple of kills in this game and boy did you see how I destroyed that overpowered vehicle and I was even alive by the end of it and they're telling their mate Dave down the pub later on that they felt like a hero because they had one of the best games that they've had ever in a Tiger 2. Whereas jaded nerds like me might end up getting a Radley Walters medal and just go, huh, oh well, I'm, I'm playing the next one. There's no doubt that the amount of hero moments that you have inside World of Tanks happen more often in matchmaking that is plus two. Or, or I should probably be saying minus two when you're playing against tanks that are two tiers lower than you. But conversely, there's also a very important point is that casual players actually get carried less. And I should probably correct this word. I should pro I, I'm just going to say terrible players get carried less. The players out there who have 45% wins in World of Tanks, they usually aren't influencing the battle a lot, which is why they're ending up with that kind of win ratio. But those hopefully happy 45% uh, win rate players are usually trying to get their daily double, try and get the win in. Now, this might be a point that's hard to accept for those players, but they will be winning far more games when they're bottom tier than when they are top tier because of the focus and the, the onus that is on those top tier tanks. If you're in a matchup where there are only three tier eights, for example, going against each other and there's a load of fives and there's a load of sixes, when the, the, the player who doesn't win very many of their games ends up in one of their top tier tanks, they're usually not going to be influential, which leaves their team in like more of a, a two versus three with the top tier vehicles. Consequently, this means that the fact that the focus is on them and they need to step up more when they are one of those top tier tanks, when they're not usually a player who wins many of their battles, means that they're going to lose more of them in those kind of positions. Whereas when they're one of the bottom tanks, then quite often they'll be a very powerful player in one of the top vehicles who's going to snowball the game in their favor. So this is a bit of a double-edged sword. There's, there's multiple ways of looking at it. You might think that they're going to do better in same tier matchmaking where they're effectively just rolling the dice, almost like a 50-50 with how important they are in the matchmaker. But those three tier spread games, uh, I feel like they're the ones that are going to end the loss streaks for the really, really, really casual players or even people who are just playing stock tanks. So I want to come on now to one of my biggest feelings. And that is that the game feels like checkers rather than chess. Checkers is simpler. It's easier to learn. There's less feeling of futility. But I also feel like there's far less reward and far less depth to the game. For me, it's so boring to see the same tanks again and again and again going into the same positions. I am absolutely super bored of the fact that there are like 600,000 battles in an ELC even 90 or 600,000 battles in the last 30 days with the Borask or the Progetto. And let's also highlight that possibly the most toxic tank, at least in my opinion for the matchmaker, is not the BZ176, although like, don't get me wrong, that is horrendous, maybe in second place. But the blooming ELC even 90. The Wargaming just seemed to sell for what, like 3,000 gold if you were to purchase it during a trading event. It's bonkers to me how Wargaming can't seem to see the future or even possible trends as to the impact that their events are going to have. Look at the TVP. In the last 30 days, the TVP T50 slash 51 has been the most played tank on the European server at any tier. And that is because it's been featured in the battle pass as well as also being top of the tree at the same time. This infamously led to Wargaming nerfing the Progetto 65 because of how popular they made it. And while I do think the TVP is safe from the chopping board, and I digress, I'm, I'm, I'm getting off focus here. I just want to highlight how annoying it is 
to just have another game with three ELC EVA 90s and they're going to go and sit in three different bushes and there's sod all that you can do about it. But this isn't just an ELC EVA 90 problem. It's, it's just the same tanks, same tier tanks, going into the same positions, creating this stale static gameplay. You almost feel like you're clocking in and mentally clocking out. I don't want to play checkers for six hours a day, but I could play chess for six hours a day. And while I know it's it's a pretty extreme example to say that, is that really the difference from same tier matchmaking to three tier spread matchmaking? While it's just one of those variables in World of Tanks, but I honestly feel like it's possibly the most important variable. It's so depressing to see less different matchups that force you out of your comfort zone in tanks, tanks or even tanks. We're not playing tic-tac-toe here, although sometimes that's how simple plus zero minus zero matchmaking feels for me. I like to be pushed out of my comfort zone in tanks to have to play as the bottom tier vehicle just as much as I like to play as the top tier vehicle to blow off a little bit of steam. And also, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I actually miss extreme events like we used to have back in the matchmaker, because at least it added a little bit of spice, at least it added a little bit of variety, something to get emotional and passionate over. And while I'm not suggesting that I want to go back to how things used to be when, for example, there were 10 tank destroyers on the enemy team and there were 10 heavy tanks on your team, that was awful. That was definitely more of a formality. I still think that there's a pure spectacle and a possibility for epic when, for example, there is a Super Conqueror versus, I don't know, an FV215B in a in a minus two game. Because while the majority of the time the Super Conqueror is going to sit down and farm the FV215B, the times when he doesn't or that the Super Conqueror gets overconfident and pushes just feels like its own narrative or its own bit of excitement along the way. So all of this comes down to my conclusion, and that is the reason why I think World of Tanks was so exciting in the first place was because of this variety, was because of how outrageous the game felt, was because of the speed of the matchmaker and that feeling that you truly were taking part in this bespoke battle. And this one battle wouldn't be replicated for maybe the whole of the rest of the evening, possibly a whole week or a month. I almost got emotional when I messed up in a game where you ended up in one of those magical opportunities on the perfect map, in the perfect tank, in the perfect matchup, with no self-propelled guns. Whereas now, when I feel like I'm I'm clocking in on, on different tiers, I just feel like I'm, I'm just putting my time in. And the fact that now tier 10 tanks are meeting just themselves 68% of the time shows you that even what is meant to be the creme de la creme of World of Tanks has less and less and less variety than ever before. Which brings me to my final, final conclusion. Honestly, there are better games out there to play than plus zero, minus zero, at least for me. How far do we standardize everything inside World of Tanks. Should we all be playing the same tank? Should we all be playing the same tier? Should we all have the same capabilities with no equipment and no customization? If it got to a point like that, then I'd rather go and play a better Battle Royale game. I'd rather go and play Bloomin' Fortnite or something. Or I'd play a real balanced eSport title. Like I go play CSGO, what's it called now? CS2? You can tell how much of a boomer I am. I was playing back on CS 1.5. The reason why I fell in love with World of Tanks was it that was this genre blender of a game which combined everything all into one while still delivering these big team battles. And that is why I think World of Tanks was successful and why, honestly, I've been having so little fun playing Tier 10 and playing Tier 8, which more and more feel like I'm playing World of Checkers rather than World of Chess. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was a very long video about the state of the matchmaker and a massive thank you to the awesome Tomato GG website for actually putting out statistics to back up the subjective feeling that I have. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know in the comments down below, did you realize how many same tier games there were at tier 10 and tier 8? What is your favorite tier to play inside World of Tanks? And what do you have to say about all of the things that I've discussed in the video today? Do you hate 
the variety in Sidewalder tanks with regards to the matchmaker? Would you rather it was plus zero, minus zero? Were there any points that I brought up that resonate with you today? Let's have a good old chin wag in the comments down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.